and welcome to Watching for a Friend, where I watch movies because I love them and let you know whether it's worth watching or not. So today's going to be a little bit different. It's been a long, stressful week for me, so I thought that I would remix this review a little bit and do a relax with me or an unwind with me. I'm not sure what I'm going to call this video just yet, but I thought this would be kind of fun just because the movie that I'm reviewing today, which is called Love Jacked, is kind of a, you know, low-key movie. It's a romantic comedy. It's something that you would watch on the weekend. It is something that's kind of bright and sunny. So I figure today would be a great time to do something for a lazy day. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Face masks, some microneedling. I'll show you guys the products that I use to keep my skin, um, you know, as fresh and elastic and wrinkle free as I can. I think we're going to start by taking off my shower cap. <laughs> freshly washed they're in plaits for y'all they're not really plaits look at me I'm so cute I'm gonna go on and start with this top one this white one here and it's really weird how you do it but um, if you've done these before so you have to like it's watery so I'm gonna start with this twist over here I think I may cut this out y'all so let me go on and get into Love Jacked so Love Jacked is a Canadian film it was released in 2018 in Canada I think it was it must have been released at theaters because the production quality is pretty high and I found it on Netflix where it is as of today when I'm filming um, it is still available on Netflix so that's where I found it that's where you can currently watch it at the time of this filming. I don't know when they will remove it though. But it's starring Amber Stevens West who plays Maya, uh, the main character. She's a young artist who goes to Africa looking for inspiration and while there she ends up meeting a man named M Mtumbe or Mtumbi. Um, Matubi, Matubi, we can't pronounce his name right it, throughout the whole movie. I'm not just the one, the only one that's having a problem with his name. It's Mtumbi or Mtumbi, Mtumbe, I don't know. Anywho, she meets wealthy bachelor in Africa and soon after they become engaged, she finds him cheating on her with another woman. So she quickly calls the engagement off. Now, upon returning to the United States to face her father, uh, who already disapproved of this relationship, her pride gets in the way and she ends up lying to her family um, and lets them believe that she's still engaged to this man and that he's actually coming uh, in a couple days to meet them. What happens is that we later meet Malcolm. He's played by Shamir Anderson, really good looking guy. He's a pool hustler. That is his official title that he gave himself. And um, he's on the run from his partner in crime who wants to kill him for stealing money from him. So Michael stows away in Maya's truck after they meet in a diner and she tells him all about you know the predicament that she's in with her former fiance and her family and Malcolm and Maya together devise a plan to hide Malcolm from his pursuer his partner in crime and fool Maya's family into thinking that Malcolm is her fiance from Africa along with these two main characters are joined by an ensemble cast of black famous celebrities and so people like Mike Epps are in it I feel like he's yeah I have things to say but Mike Epps is in it Keith David who I didn't know his name until I looked at the credits. I was like, this man is so familiar to me, but I've never known his actual name. His name is Keith David for the people that are in the same predicament as me. Marla Gibbs, who's a 70s star from 227, loved that show when I was a kid. And Lyric Bent, who will probably be familiar to most of you um, because he's been in a lot of movies 
recently. So I personally went into this movie with a grain of salt when I saw that Mike Epps was one of the executive producers just because again I have feelings about that but I'm not this is not a review on Mike Epps so I'm gonna keep it to this particular movie. <laughs> and what I found with this movie was a gold mine of questions, plot holes, uh, underdeveloped characters, all, all that good stuff. Now I do want you guys to hear me out because I, I know this is sounding like it's gonna be a negative review but it's really not. I was willing to let a lot of the plot holes go which is something that is huge for me. For any of my friends, I'm like the main person who's like, nope, can't get past that glaring plot hole. Plot hole. But um, now I will say that this movie is not going to be for everyone. It's going to appeal to a very niche audience. So I'll talk about that for a bit as well. So the first group of people that I think will really enjoy this movie are um, people who enjoy Tyler Perry film. Although this movie has it does have a PG-13 rating, most likely due to just the few swear words that it does say, has a, a gun reference, and very mild sexual references. It stays well within PG territory. It doesn't push the envelope in any way. Uh, it doesn't have the same religious overtones that T Perry's films are known for, but it's sure to be a safe watch for most viewers, including children. So you don't have to worry about that. The next group of people I think will like this are people who enjoy Hallmark movies. And I say that because the film isn't super squeaky clean, but, um, and it doesn't have any like religious undertones. A lot of Hallmark movies are like, you know, they have a lot of holiday movies. They have a lot of movies about kind of, you know, faith and things like that. This one didn't have any real religious undertones, but it was mostly good, clean fun. It's not nearly as sappy as your average romantic comedy, but it'll definitely hit that romantic comedy bone for a lot of people because, you know, it was like good, wholesome fun. I also think another group of people that will enjoy this is people that can appreciate a movie at the very least who enjoy high production quality. So the movie was supposed to be based in California, but when I looked it up, it actually was filmed on location in South America or in South Africa and Canada and included some really impressive shots of South Africa and the set design was really good, like the home that she lived in and the town that they were in was really good. Costumes, they didn't have any weird that's so raven looking outfits on there. It was very appropriate for where they lived. It was very appropriate for her age. And uh, the hair and makeup was really good. But they were nominated by the Canadian Screen Awards for the hair in the movie. So, and we didn't have any crazy wigs up in there that look crazy, you know, we didn't have any a fall from grace wigs so i thought that that was really good so if you appreciate those movies um i really appreciated the visuals personally the actors you know all meshed pretty well and um the set design and everything in between was really good so kudos to the filmmakers on that now if you haven't seen the movie and you're interested in watching i highly highly recommend stopping the video here and returning later you can always hit that like button and that subscribe button to make it easier for you to find later when you're ready to come back and for those of you who like to stay and don't mind some spoilers there's not a lot because this isn't any type of mystery movie it's very predictable then let's keep it moving that got really hard to talk <laughs> with so i just went on and it's about an hour later now i washed off the face mask i also washed the protein treatment out of my hair and now the next step that I'm moving on to is the second step in the Afa G treatment. I really love Trader Joe's their hair products. If you guys have ever seen the Trader Joe's Shea Butter and Coconut Oil Hair Mask. So I'm gonna be mixing these two and basically after the protein treatment, it you know infuses your hair with the protein, but to lock in all that moisture, you have to, of course, condition so that's what we're going to be doing right now now 
Going deeper into some of the things that didn't work well in this film, Maya's only motivation is to prove her father wrong and the rest of the family and ultimately even her father as well are extremely supportive in either direction that she goes. You don't get a sense that they're going to publicly shame her and her father actually would be really happy if she broke up with this guy in the beginning. So you really don't see her motivation for being as prideful as she is other than she just wants to be right. Compared to Malcolm's situation where he actually could be killed if this man catches up to him, you know, her plight just kind of pales in comparison. So you don't really have any sympathy for her the entire time. And again, she's kind of bratty. She doesn't have that great of a personality to carry off, you know, this this motive you're like why is she doing this she has a great family they mention this multiple times in the movie her dad is judgmental but it's coming from a very protective place so her pride is really the only thing getting in the way the writer wrote unnecessary details and one example is that at this point in the story Maya reveals that her mother died when she was a child and this is never revisited and in all honesty it doesn't add any depth to Maya's character or play into her character arc other than to maybe explain why her dad is so overprotective. But she has an aunt that's like a mother so she's not desperate for a mother's love. She doesn't like support from a motherly figure. She's educated. She's well supported. So I'm not quite sure why they decided to make the mother figure in her life an aunt instead of an actual mom. Her aunt lived with them. They seem to own a family store all together. Her aunt helped them make decisions. And so it just seemed like they should have just made her the mom and not the aunt. Going back to how extreme Maya got in this movie, she actually convinces Malcolm, so originally it was just to pose as her fiance, she actually convinces Malcolm to go through with an entire wedding and in front of her family and friends, which was really, really, it was, it was such an awkward point in the movie because you're like, what the heck? Are you really trying to fool your family that badly? You think that they're going to, you know, just, uh, you know, pose as fiance and then, you know, make a really public breakup. All is said and done. They go their separate ways, but she, her pride won't allow that to happen. She ends up convincing him to go through with a full on wedding, legal wedding, and you know pose as fiance and furthermore convinces him that they can't just separate he has to fake his own death i really didn't understand why they went to that extreme that's a little twisted and i like twisted i do but that was twisted even for me like you know to go this far your family actually really likes him including your father your father is the one that you were proving wrong so you actually already proved your father wrong by showing him that he was a great guy so now she's just turns into trash she's a horrible person at this point so they even went as far to like tell their family that they were going on a honeymoon and they left for two weeks saying that they were going to Africa and she made up a story that he drowned on their honeymoon. His Her family actually throws a memorial for him. They went really, really far. Her family throws a memorial for him <laughs> and they are they're devastated for her they really love this man so they're upset they're crying and you know they really care about him they really care about her and they are actually mourning his death and she is still playing the part she she will take the secret to her grave which I was like you know this is literally if this were to happen in real life and again I know this is supposed to be over dramatized if this were to happen in real life people would think she would get committed this is something that would make news this is ridiculous faking a wedding like going through with a full wedding faking a death just because this man is desperate is a totally ridiculous so that i thought that they took that a little too far i thought they could have reeled it back in and it still would have been an entertaining movie now aside from these semi frustrating points the movie does pace well and it is lighthearted. let me emphasize that the only reason 
I am willing to get past these glaring potholes is because the movie was so lackadaisical about the plot to begin with. So other than that, they used a very predictable romantic comedy formula. So it was kind of run of the mill rom-com material. There weren't many surprises. They made it short and sweet and very, very easy to get through because of how predictable it was. Now, uh, what's going to happen for me now so this is my relaxation day what i'm going to do is i'm going to go take rinse all of this out i'm actually going to go take a shower and rinse all of this out of my hair and also rinse this calming formula off of my face and I am going to, it's evening now, so what I do in the evening is I put on uh, my special serum. This is the Luna Sleeping Night Oil. So this is really good. It's a blue formula. really like this. I also, now that's retinol. I also use a retinol serum that I've gotten. I'll link all of these below. I got this retinol serum from, oops. Is it focusing? I got this retinol serum. Oh, man, I don't think it's focusing. Okay, well, I will link this below. Retinol serum from Amazon as well. It was really, it's very good. I also have this maracuja oil, which is so hydrating. And I use this on my face as well. Also got this from, from Amazon. And then I use... I mix all of these together. I use this vitamin C serum, all from the same company, and then I use the hyaluronic acid serum. So I use all of these, very, very hydrating, use these every night. Now I do all of these serums in the morning. The only thing I do not do in the morning is the sleeping night oil and the retinol, just because these can make people sensitive to the sun. So I don't use those. I Nix those and then I use a facial moisturizer and of course um, I also use a I will link it in the comments below during the day I use an SPF it's a gel SPF because my skin again gets oily but you got to protect yourself from the Sun so I'm gonna go take a shower after I finish this review rinse out this hair I usually will twist my hair up into flat twists and cover it up for the day. I will now to relax when I take my shower. What I do is I keep all the lights off, lights and candles, and I usually put on a playlist with Tibetan singing bowls or really calming frequencies. Sometimes I'll put on water and I try to take a very mindful shower. I drink lots of water and enjoy the rest of my evening. So, that wraps up this video. This was a lot harder <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. It wasn't as relaxing as I thought it was going to be, but again, I haven't taken my meditative shower yet, so that's what we're going to do next. And um, I really hope you enjoyed this video and this new format. I hope you let me know what you think of Love Jacked. Let me know if you liked it and all of its oddities. <laughs> I'd also love if you liked this video and subscribed to, to my channel just because I want to meet I want this community to be a fun community that loves movies as much as I do and loves to review movies. I want to hear everyone's thoughts on it. And then last thing, obviously hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I have a new video. I upload every single week. I try to upload at least once a week, but when I can, maybe I can do two or more. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, watching for a friend, and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.